Hello, everyone, and welcome to the session um, Secrets of Effective Editing Workshops. I'm going to start sharing my screen now. And welcome, everyone. So, my name is uh, Antonana. I'm a Ukrainian Wikipedia editor and admin. I am a member of Wikilove's Monuments Ukraine organizing team, and I am a member of an affiliate of Wikimedia Ukraine. I currently also serve as the chair of the Wikimedia Foundation Board of Trustees, and I do have some experience in conducting workshops, which I would like to share with you. So, starting to talk about workshops, um, workshops have um, components which we can group into a workshop plan, um, starting with goals, what we want to do uh, with the workshop audience or with the workshop activity, topics, uh, lists of things to create or to improve, logistics, which include venue, internet access, computers, access to the venue, online or offline would be different. Registration form for the participants, refreshments that are provided by uh, from the grant or partners, the venue. Um, let's talk about account creation and IP range blocking in that uh, component. Help at the event, where the, uh, you can request it from your community members, affiliates, or from the partners of the venue. Feedback form. You got to understand and keep track of things to improve for the next time and support after the event just by conducting a um, workshop and teaching people or showing them how to make edits it doesn't mean that your work is done you might still find yourself uh, answering questions from people after the event when they actually started using Wikipedia on their own I'm not going to go into more logistical details of workshop and co-workshop now, but we can return to this list later, maybe in the chat, during the discussion. So, let's talk about secret tips. Um, a lot of people organizing workshops reinvent the wheel, make avoidable mistakes, get frustrated themselves, and create a bad impression on partners. And if you have not been successful in organizing a workshop, the partners might not want to work mm -hmm with you, uh, or even with your affiliate or your community, or have that impression about Wikipedia in general. Secret one is single session general audience outreach has negligible impact. So plan for two sessions at least, or a series of sessions, or pick a specialized audience. A specialized audience, people who are interested in some specific things, might be able to create a lot during even one single session, and they might be come hooked up, so to say, on editing even afterwards, after one session. Also, do not be tempted to give souvenirs upon participants coming only after they conclude. Uh, your two sessions, the series, or even um, think about whether you need the swingers at all. Secret two, how to prepare. Find out as much as you can before the event about the venue, your audience, and um, uh, all the things that you might need in order to plan for your event better. For example, you may have an agreement with the audience that the venue is going to be available from this or that uh, period of time. But it might be that the internal procedures allow you to enter basically only together with your participants. And that might influence uh, you being able to prepare some things in advance. For example, if you have refreshments, maybe you would like to put at least candies and uh, cookies on the table water but you would have to figure out how to do that when your participants are already coming in. Uh, also secret three, three make a plan B for everything. But also accept that sometimes things are just out of your control, like electricity or internet. But if there is no electricity at the moment of the event and your participants are already gathered, try to figure out 
at what you can offer them. For example, ask your participants to write down their emails so you can send them the materials. For example, how to edit Wikipedia or how to do some other things, and also follow up with invitations for the next events. Also, if you can, try to have your laptop charged and maybe have there some uh, prepared slides, uh, PDFs, uh, about general, how to read Wikipedia, for example, or some other things, maybe some interesting facts about Wikipedia. So you can engage your audience uh, for such a talk, even if it's going to be shorter than what you planned, or maybe you can even go to some cafe or somewhere where you can actually turn it into an outreach session instead of a working session. Now, what do we do about the account creation limit from our IP? And this is a more Wikimedia related uh, thing. So you need to be prepared on that because if there is like a venue or logistics, there are, there, there are some also other players, players involved, but uh, you as an organizer should definitely find out more about the uh, account creation limit and IP range blocking before the event in order to know and to be as much prepared as you can. Currently, the limit is six accounts per 24 hours from one IP. So uh, with account creation limit, you can do things before the event and during the event itself. Before the event, you can encourage people to register beforehand at home work. So there is no issue with the account creation limit. You can also ask people to fill in the registration form and give them instructions, uh, a link to a video if available, so they can register at home work. And ask them to submit their username in the registration form so they actually complete the registration. But of course, take into account privacy uh, things and uh, issues and uh, um, be aware that not all, of, not all of the people are still going to create accounts. And um, account creation before the event can also be, like, account creation limit before the event can also be mitigated by requesting temporarily removing the limit of account creation by, per IP address. But you would need to contact the venue to know the needed information, as the request needs to include a date, place, wikis, event title, number of participants, and the public address. And uh, here is a link to a fabricator um, where you can find the form where you would be able to go and submit. But of course, before the event means some time before the event, and not like five minutes I needed urgently. Uh, account creation before the event, you can also ask people to fill in a registration form their desired usernames and active emails, and you can create these accounts yourself if you have the rights, or ask somebody with the rights to do it. Um, as we know that people might not want to create them themselves, so you might want to do that work for them um, in order to make sure that they are kind of prepared to start editing for your workshop. You can also request rights of account creator on the VT you plan to work with if you do not have those rights. It might be still um, helpful to follow. Them. And the form to create account looks like a usual form of creating account, but um, as you can see, you can also uh, use a temporary random password that is going to be sent to the specified, the specified email address and not to you. And uh, uh, you would also need to publicly uh, state why, what is the event that you are creating the accounts for. So in this Wikipedia, you go to Wikipedia request for permission event coordinator page. And on that time, you have some account creation where you can uh, request, read and request things. Before the event, you can also create a few generic accounts, like editor something, so you can lend them to people for the time of the event, or even give them to people. But you would need to make sure they added an email address to the account and know how to request review. During the event itself, because things happen and people just come to the event. Maybe new people read the announcement and decided to come, and people who registered the accounts were unable to come. So check if there are people with mobiles who can enable hotspots for others to be able to create accounts. You can also create extra accounts by yourself if you have the rights. 
like administrators, stewards, bureaucrats, all through programs and events in dashboard. And um, in this regard, I'm also going to talk a bit about IP range blocks, uh, the blocks that are affecting the range of IP addresses rather than just one. Uh, in Ukraine, we have an issue with IP range blocks affecting editing for mobile companies, for example. Um, there is like a very prolific vandal and then admins block, or um, and then people, a lot of people are affected. So the architecture of the internet setup at the experimental stages disproportionately affects some countries more than others. Blocking an IP range because of repeated vandalism, say, in a Boston school, will not create a huge problem. Whereas blocking a school in Ghana, for example, often means blocking whole cities, regions, or providers, as there are just too few IPs for the country. And to illustrate that disproportion, MIT Boston has 16.7 million IP addresses assigned. Ghana, only 2.2. Population of MIT Boston is 15.5 thousand, whereas population of Ghana is 34 million, which results in having less than one IP address per person in Ghana, whereas having more than 1,000 IP addresses per person in MIT Boston. This staggering disproportion is, of course, not the result of any ill will by MIT or anyone else. This setup is a remnant of ancient engineering decisions made in the early 80s, when the entire internet was an experiment. There was never an expectation that this will not be replaced. IPv6 is the technical solution for that, and it has existed for more than a decade already but it is a very costly one-time investment. And sadly, this is beyond our power at Wikimedia to fix it, so we need to uh, deal with the issues of IP range blocking, how we can. Before the event, you can locally request account creation rights if you do not have them. You can locally request IP block exempt for yourself, so you are able to request help in the project if need be. Um, you may prepare or everything that you can, find out the IP address of the venue, and it's uh, everything fine, and they are not blocked. But that some very active ad, uh, vandal decided to vandalize a lot of pages on Wikipedia, and your venue is going to be blocked right before the event. So it is better to have the IP block exempt for yourself, so you can um, ask help figure out what to do and um, change things, even if um, um, in how you were preparing for the event, you didn't absolutely need it. Uh, usually named editors can edit, just not register. And uh, before the event, check if you blocked yourself. As due to the nature of block applied, there might be a need for additional information before it is possible to decide when to block you. Um, and it is very likely that you are not personally blocked, just prevented from editing, um, and uh, you have a link here to template auto block, where the uh, issues described and things to follow uh, through are actually mentioned. So you can read and figure out if this is something that you would need to do before the event. I also listed here useful pages. Um, starting from how to run an MDF form, which is also good for a workshop overall, uh, about account creation, uh, pages where you can request for permissions or read more, or request some um, local uh, rights uh, or uh, exempt from some blocking, and also uh, pages about IP range blocking, where you can also read a bit more information about things like that. And thank you very much, Jokwe, for uh, attending the session. And if we have time uh, in the chat, we can, uh, we can talk about these things or some other things and maybe share some tips among ourselves uh, in order to have a better 
uh, better guide the book on how to do effective uh, editing workshops. Thank you.